Hey folks, welcome to the second edition of Primo Nutmeg. And joining me tonight is Paul, hey. Shane, what's up, and Jack. Hello. I'd like to thank you all for being here. It's uh, glad to have you back, Jack. And uh, Shane, Do it you, again, right? <laughs> you've been on my radio show before. That is this correct. Is the first time that you're on my podcast. Paul, I actually feel bad because you took the time to come out to Notre Dame and visited me, but I didn't have that radio show then, so... Yeah, I know, but for the experience, you took me out to the strip club. We got all sorts of drunk. You know, I'd say it was a pretty good give and take there. It was a good time. I actually had a lot of fun. Um, but I, from what I hear, you and Jack actually had a lot of fun this past week. You went and saw the new Dragon Ball Z movie. That's correct. Yes, we did. How was that? It was uh, adequate. It was good. It's not every day you get to see something that's actually animated uh, in theaters. Yeah, just for the big screen aspect alone, it was pretty awesome, and I guess yeah. the context of the movie was great, too. I can't think of, actually, the last uh, animated movie I've seen in the theaters, like the Simpsons movie, maybe? Yeah, it was probably Simpsons movie, or maybe, uh, for me, I was thinking even Lion King. Wow, Lion King, that's going back pretty far, in 3D, or just the original? No, just like in 1995 or whatever. Oh, wow. See, I, I mentioned this last time, I never really got into anime, like Dragon Ball Z or anything, so... It like, takes a special kind of nerd, Steve, you know? <laughs> I tried to. I was in Japan, and I went in Kyoto to the anime museum. So, you know, I was trying to get into it, but I just... I don't get, like, the whole... Uh, what's, like, the hulking up thing called? With the po Powering up? The <laughs> but he's, like, a, he's a super saiyan, right? That's what it is? Yeah, it's, like, essentially harnessing your chi and then exploding it all in one big burst. And you become, like, different levels of Super Saiyan or something? Well, that's where it gets a little bit crazy because what they have to do, essentially, you know, every season a new bad guy comes along, so they have to keep raising their power levels to compete with the new force. And, you know, I mean, potentially this kind of writing can go on for years. Right. Yeah, it's actually Dragon Ball's been around for 30 years, so they've <laughs> just, they just been keep fighting, the like, numbers. increasingly insane bad guys. Like, mm -hmm. um, they actually made sort of a reference that in the movie there's, like, a few guys who... Um, you know, were like villains earlier on and then decided to become good guys later or whatever. And um, they're still sort of included in the group, but are so irrelevant because the power levels have like increased to like exponential uh, increase. Yeah. So they're like, oh, uh, we left some of the people home because it was too tough for them. But in reality, the, it's like third weakest guy is the one who said that. <laughs> so like, you know, he was kicking ass in the movie, but every other time he's usually just on the sideline from like either the first watching episode. yeah watching kids or collecting dragon balls or something trying to find somebody i see so the weaker characters essentially they fall into like comic relief roles mm. if that makes sense yeah or like a plot device yes continuation now i haven't even seen ads for this was this just showing at buckland it's like I believe a special it was release showing in a couple something? other theaters too, but it was I think there was only like nine showings in the state. Because I haven't even seen commercials for it anywhere. Yeah, I saw I found out about it online mm -hmm. and uh I went I was trying to find showing times and stuff, and it actually took like a lot of research to even like find when, what day and time it was playing and right. um like what theaters. It was only like three in the state that I found. <laughs> Jack texted me, he's like, eleven o'clock on Saturday, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, that was the only time we had to go see it. How much did you pay for that? Twelve fifty. Wow. And yeah, that's new Buckle matinee prices. That's the matinee price? Holy shit. Twelve fifty? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh it's expensive. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's Buckland is five dollars. Buckland is overpriced. Actually, if you go to um the Starplex, I think it is in Southington, that's only like seven bucks. And they have uh fully reclining seats, like padded leather or pleather reclining seats. Yeah, the one in Waterford's like that, too. Yeah. And you get free refill on your sodas. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I've seen an extreme cheapskates like that, actually. <laughs> the guy would go in the garbage just to get the free refill so you wouldn't have to pay for the full soda. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty awesome. But Buckland has a bar in it, doesn't it? Uh, Yeah, they do. There's yes. mojitos. and Yeah, because I actually remember, Jack, when we saw the Simpsons movie there, we went to the bar beforehand. So... You can, you can drink inside the theater, right? I don't think so. It has to be outside? I think so. I didn't. There's like a bar that you actually No, no, you could, you could bring it into the theater. That's yeah, what that's they what said. I thought. 
for the low low price of 1995 for a mojito but you know <laughs> hey they get you somehow right well uh this past week i actually went to an event with jack uh jack and i went to go see van halen and that was pretty cool what did you think jack what did you think of the show overall um that was about what i expected yep. you know um it was uh they're a pretty tight band that's for sure you could tell they're you know they know their stuff and what they're doing and sort of consummate professionals you know running around on stage and like having a great time whether yep. or not they were actually having a great time you know <laughs> you never know but they were they were selling it for sure yeah. um but like you know the meadows or the xfinity theater these days has never really been like known for its excellent sound yeah like i had a really hard time hearing it was like super loud, like definitely loud, but had like absolutely no clarity or like definition. I didn't really notice that, but I didn't sneak in like you did. So I don't know if maybe inside the uh, well, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, I uh, managed to get past the fence and the lawn into the actual venue, but I don't really remember that happening. <laughs> but if I were to have done that, it would have been pretty cool. I mean, I was, I would have probably gone right behind the soundboard. Which uh, there was uh, probably would have been something like three seats available there, and uh, would have been able to kind of like see <laughs> the band without any um, like people standing up in front of you or anything like that. But again, like it didn't really help the acoustics, which right. you know I would have assumed theoretically that it would have done that <laughs> because My that's like where the best sound is supposed to be for the guy who's recording it to and mixing it and shit. From my perspective, it was uh, I was kind of torn because they played a lot of new songs, which I wasn't really expecting, and I think that killed the mood at times. But it actually kind of helped me because when they played those new songs, everyone would sit down, and then I could see it from where I was standing, right uh, on the lawn. Well, but some of that, that new stuff wasn't that bad. Um, I thought it was pretty decent. It kind of it was on par with their old songs. It just was that nobody knew the song, so they weren't really into it. Yeah, I mean, as a just a casual uh, Van Halen listener, I wouldn't even really call myself a fan necessarily. The song I liked the most uh, out of all of them was a new song called uh, Chinatown. Yeah. And that was a really cool song, and it had probably one of the more like involved bass lines because uh, I think Wolfgang uh, was right. writing it instead of uh, Michael Anthony. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, I thought it was a good show. Uh, I think you're probably right about... David Lee Roth, you, you mentioned this after the concert, David Lee Roth kind of killed the mood when he sat down and he started doing his, like, story. Yeah, um, what the fuck was that? Like, what was the point? Just to so, explain his necklace? <laughs> How long did this go on for? Uh, Five to ten minutes. Yeah, it was Ugh. pretty drawn out. But I, I, So I have to say, I saw them back in 09, right after they reunited, and he, he did the same thing. Um, he kind of tells a story but before he plays Ice Cream Man. And when he did it before, it was kind of more coherent, and it made sense. It's about, like, how he came up with the song, sort of. Um, okay. And it, I don't know. It just didn't work this time. <laughs> it was just it was kind of nonsense. and Yeah, it was like a big tangent about Little League football. Yeah, it didn't really make sense. And then he sense. mentioned <laughs> that... What does um, that have to do with ice cream? <laughs> it's, uh, he's, it's had something to do with about laughing to win. Or yeah. laughing, we win. Laugh like soldiers, laugh like pirates, laugh like yeah, laugh cowboys. Like, yeah, you laugh to win, and all yeah. those people laugh when they are like, you know, swashbuckling or right. killing engines or whatever. <laughs> and uh, he had it on his necklace, and then he just started playing Ice Cream Man. So I was like, okay, well, that yeah. was boring and pointless. Yeah, yeah like it, completely non sequitur. It just didn't make sense this time. And uh, also, there was a big slip up on Panama. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, they were like off time for a little bit and just kind of like plowed through it. Yeah. And then Roth kind of like figured out where the rest of the band was and sort of. And how the hell does that even happen? You've been doing the same fucking song for 30 years. It's like their number one hit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Come that's on. actually sometimes a problem if you don't like, if you're not even thinking about it and you like happen to forget or like are thinking about something else. I mean, that was like the second to last song or something. So he was thinking about like the blowjob he was going to get <laughs> later, you know, or. It was already kind of half in the bag because, I mean, they disappeared off stage like two or three times while everyone yep. was doing their solos. You know they were just boozing it up. Like, I mean, he walked out with a thing of Jack Daniels uh, when he was doing his acoustic guitar shit. I couldn't see that from my perspective. Oh, well, I, I would assume you that's what he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was unfortunate, too, that Wolfgang didn't get his own solo because everyone else did. And Alex fucking kicks ass on the drums, I have to say. At least I think so. You didn't think that? 
Well, I mean, he was pretty good, but there was a lot of weird like triggers and stuff happening that he wasn't doing. So I, I'm not entirely sure how much of it was canned and how much of it was live. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'll say the uh, Wolfgang was a really good, really, really good bass player, I thought. And um, it would have been cool for him to get a little bass solo. Because yeah. I mean, Michael Anthony got one that was part of their repertoire usually. Right. But it was a lot of like, he would use a delay and a lot of special effects and kind of stupid solo, you know? Right. For like the jabronis out in the audience who don't know what playing is, you know, it's just cool noise. Mm. And actually, uh, Van Halen's solo at this show was very much like that too. Like he yeah. was making like his guitar do crazy like harmonic whines and stuff, but like. For like a long time too. It was like a, a you know, a minute of like the same noise, you know? Right. Yeah. And like, uh, he wasn't actually like playing or doing anything. Mm. He was sort of tapping with one hand and then just slapping the strings with his picking hand. It's like, mm. dude, I could fucking do that on guitar. <laughs> like, turn my gain up to eight million. Yeah, that's what it's gonna sound like. That's just the sound of strings slapping frets. Like, that's not. Well, right. you'd be a millionaire if you could do that on stage, I guess. Well, that's why I think that's why he used to turn his back. <laughs> yeah. Like, because that was always the classic Van Halen move, and it was it built this aura around him. Like, oh, he doesn't want to like reveal his secrets because the secret is he's not actually doing anything. You know, it's a fucking chorus pedal and a really bad distortion like just like oz <laughs> so hurricane have you seen any concerts this summer yeah i got arrested at one <laughs> <laughs> did you yep what happened well uh i decided to have a few drinks and uh <laughs> oh sorry yeah i decided to have a few drinks and um i went to some fucking stupid country concert i just go there to drink and so we were on the lawn. <laughs> you only went to the concert to drink. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you can just go to a bar. <laughs> well, you can tailgate, and then you go in, and then just fucking, I wander around. I, that's a problem. When I go to concerts, I wander around and meet new people, and that's kind of what I did at Slightly Stupid uh, when I went in earlier July. And uh, I just like to wander around and like kind of meet people and, you know, bum cigarettes if I don't have any. It's kind of It's kind of a fun time. But anyways, so... I was uh, waiting in line to take a piss, and the security guards all like uh, at the meadows, you know where the all the, the um, what do you fuck, fucking um, the the pissers are? It's like that one big section. Um, so I'm like standing there, and then there's the hill, and then there's the trucks, and there's like the backstage. Right. So all the security guards like uh, were like pounding on this one kid, like because he was fighting. So they're all their attention's there. So I just <laughs> walked down the hill, walked under a couple trucks. Then uh, I just, like, found my way into the backstage VIP area, and there's, like, fucking 50,000 people out there. I was like, wow, this is fucking awesome. Now, I don't like country music. I think it sucks, but at the same time, it was pretty fucking cool. So, like, I decided to walk out and try and get out of there because I didn't want to be there anymore. And uh, as soon as I walked out, I was walked out by a couple or a security guard. So I thought they were just going to kick me out. And uh, they hand me over to the Hartford police, and I got arrested. Wow. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, for and sneaking then, backstage. Yeah. Like, what was it trespassing? I got yeah, and I got four days of uh, community service at court. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm halfway done. I just got two more days. I'm done. Yeah, it's not bad, but still, I mean, take a five too minutes seriously. of fucking. Yeah, I know. It was stupid. He could be a terrorist. Like meandering into some yeah. stupid little secluded area. Yeah. And I, how was. I, I, I don't understand. It's fucking stupid, but whatever. But did you enjoy it while you were there? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. So was it worth it? No. Oh. Well, it, it would have been worth it if I just got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then the funny part is I I got impounded or whatever, so I'm in the cell, and there's some fucking weird people that go into the Hartford cells at I night. I imagine. Oh, yeah. There was like this one like homeless guy in there. He just like was staring at me. I'm like, oh man, I gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, night night, keep your butthole tight. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> well, I was in a cell alone, so then um, I finally fucking got out. He was like, oh, the one cop's like, what are you in here for, DUI boy? I was like, no, I just want to get. I was at a concert and I got kicked out and got arrested. Oh, so they let me out, and as soon as I walk out to outside Hartford at one in the morning. <laughs> There's a black lady fighting the cops right like right in front of me. I was like, "Wow, this is fucking awesome." <laughs> so I like walked up to it. I was just like checking it out, you know. I'm like, "Wow, this is pretty fucking cool." So, uh, I'm like, "Yeah, I asked the cop. I'm like, "Hey, man, I just need to get a taxi. I need to get the fuck out of here." He's like, "Oh, just walk down the street." So then I walked down the street and then the bars were still open. I'm like, "Man, 
I want to fucking um, I want to kind of drink some. I'm having a shitty night, so <laughs> <laughs> so I walk up to this kid because I needed a cigarette at that point. I'm like, man, I fucking need a cigarette. So the kid goes, "All right, man, I'll give you a cigarette if you can tell me a good story." I'm like, "Oh, I got a great fucking story for you." <laughs> So he, uh, like, because I get telling him the whole story, and he's like, wow, that was awesome. Here's two cigarettes, man. I was like, thanks. So Thanks, but I, I just wanted I want, one. Yeah, I wound up meeting these guys at the bar, had a couple shots with them, and then fucking got in a taxi and went home. This <laughs> drives me home. And then I, I talked about, uh, like, how much, uh, like, I was like, man, we kind of have this discussion about how, like, fucking America's corrupt and shit. And, like, you know, he only charged me, like, like 70 bucks for the ride home and he brought me down to get a pack of cigarettes so like it was like a win-win all the way around well and shane's an honorary member of isis now yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's not true how about you paul how was uh how was your summer did you see any concerts no did not go to any concerts at all this summer see i try to go to one like at least one a year i think that's a good rate of seeing shows <sighs> it just kind of sucks nowadays because it's not the same as it used to be you know I still kind of regret when I don't see a band, though. Like, uh, two years ago, it was about this, about this time of year, Black Sabbath was touring again because they just came out with a new album. Yeah. And I really wanted to see it, and I didn't go because I had to move out to South Bend, Indiana, mm -hmm. so I missed them. I don't know. I, if you, um, I regret the Who, I suppose, but the tickets yeah. were like $200 or something ridiculous like really? that. So. I think Brandall went to that, didn't he? I think he did. Well, I, I, I remember sure. I kind of fucked Paul out of going to Yet's. He still holds a grudge to this day about it. Well, I think I kind of fucked myself out of going to yes well, by getting You didn't get to well, go I that? kicked the knife, so. Huh. That we did. Are we rehashing this right <laughs> now? <laughs> podcast, Shane, or what? Uh, I just want to make sure you don't hold it against me still. Yeah, secretly I've been bi you know, biding my time, <laughs> plotting my revenge until we're on this podcast. <laughs> in Steve McGann's basement on this day. Revenge is a dish best served cold, my friend. <laughs> But no, I uh, I don't know. There just really hasn't been too many uh, bands that really appeal to me. I What's suppose. the last concert you saw? Oh man, uh, counting hippie festivals or? Uh yeah, I guess so. Actually, I haven't ever been to one festival. Um, hmm, last real concert. It was probably like Toby Keith or something stupid like that. There was a time when I was going to country shows just like Shane because everybody's getting cocked there and there's a bunch of hot chicks, you know? Yeah. Just yeah, I mean, time in general. not like you even give a shit about the music. You just want to go and have a good fucking time. Oh, you, know? you hate the music, but, yeah. you you know, you buck yeah. up, you put on your cowboy hat, and then yeah. you just go hang out with these filthy rednecks in yeah. the field, you know? I mean, it's fun. It's just a party, really. Yeah. So Sounds like any Saturday night in Colchester. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, uh, I actually remember... Speaking of going to events, uh, this th a couple weeks ago, Rowdy Roddy Piper died, and it was a big deal for me because you know I grew up loving wrestling, and he was probably one of the biggest villains of all time. I, I think you watched uh, WCW at least when we were about thirteen, and he was yeah, around. Yeah, well, you know, I always watched wrestling a little bit growing up, so I knew of him as a child. Yeah, too, but just by the kilt, I suppose. But we uh, we got to meet him once back, I think it was like 09, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we sure did. It was like him and Mick Foley, I believe, that were yeah. the headlining. Yeah, and Mick Foley there. was an asshole. <laughs> he was a complete asshole. Well, he barely he? wanted to sign our autographs, you know? I was like, geez, dude, give me my money back. So the way I, rem I remember it is with Mick Foley, we went up to him, and like he was very cold. Like He didn't want to like talk to us at all. It and then a... like... And then, like, after the the wrestling show, we, like, ran into him again backstage or something, right? Because we were, like, milling around <laughs> yeah. and, like, trying to, really trying to just, you know, casually talk to him again. And he's, like, you know, walking away from us and avoiding us. And then we, when we were leaving, we ran into him, like, again outside. And he still didn't want to Mac! Mac! <laughs> it actually, It actually came to that point where we were just, like, chasing after his car, like, fuck you, dude. You know, like, seriously. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a table, ladders, and chairs match. <laughs> He's in the limo. Oh, well, they're going after him. <laughs> but no, uh, Piper was definitely awesome. You know, he, he was. was genuinely happy to see us. We asked him about the uh, whole spittoon story or whatever yep. from down in the Caribbean, which right. he confirmed was actually true. Yep. Which was we awesome. talked to him about they live. He was yeah. telling us about they live. He was very friendly, and I've I, you know I've met a few celebrities, and I've met a lot of professional wrestlers. And he was by far the nicest, like very friendly, just kind of wanted to bullshit. Well, it's that good old Canadian hospitality, you know. Yeah, that might be it. Hmm. It could be the case. Yeah, I suppose so. But yeah, um, he died recently, and uh, it got me thinking about there have been a lot of professional wrestlers who have died recently. 
like a lot and like, like very conspiracy. Tr- <clears throat> well, no, I don't think it's a conspiracy. I think it's just yeah, steroids. Ed McMahon's picking them all off or whatever. Yeah. But like, yeah. Ed yeah. McMahon. <laughs> Sorry, Ed McMahon. <laughs> Shows how much I watch. Eleven Rob's million. Movie. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it is sad though. Like uh, Dusty Rhodes died earlier this summer, and uh, I remember last year the Ultimate Warrior died. Yeah, it seems like. I don't know. It's kind of tragic. Like, do you remember that uh, movie? The is Rick Flair dead too? No, he's still alive. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, not yet. I actually. <laughs> well, uh, obviously. <laughs> well, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is over the course of the past year that all these people died, or a couple. Uh, years? no, but the past few years. I brought this list here because listen, to all these people. Oh, that we are, have a list. Bust li- out the list. And, like, the causes of death, too. Like, it's very tragic. Dead Wrestler Society. So, <laughs> Owen Hart, he died in that fall. Remember that? Yep. He, like, yeah. fell to the ring and snapped his neck. That was, like, the Did first you see major that? one. Uh, no, I, I don't think there's a recording, is there? Oh, yeah. That was shit was live when it happened. Yeah, and it happened it was, No, no, no. But what it was, was like a pay-per-view, and I, then all of a sudden he fell. But what was happening was they were showing, like, the they show these vignettes before the matches. Mm-hmm. Like, they kind of build up for it. And they were airing that when the thing broke, so that oh. they just uh, after that aired, they were just showing Jim Ross and and Jerry Lawler kind of talking to each other, and they didn't like really know what to do. So they yeah, just, like shied just, it off like, at the time. Oh, cut like, to cut to the Jr. and the King, and then they're like, uh, yeah, so yeah, they didn't really know okay, what to say. Yeah. They just kind of do- Sable, huh? Yeah. Well, no, they were. <laughs> I think they were like describing what was happening, and then they started talking about some other match or something. That was actually a criticism that they got was that they didn't stop the show, um, but yeah, they kept going with it. Well, it's theater; <laughs> the show must go on, you know. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, so yeah, that Man, these guys are great wrestlers. <laughs> that ho- that happened uh, a couple years or that same year, Rick Rude died of a heart attack. The next year, Yoko Zuna died of a heart attack. I don't know if you guys remember him. Yeah, yeah. Sad that's a big surprise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, what was the cause of death? A ham sandwich. Road Warrior Hawk di- died of a heart attack. Paul, oh, you remember Road the Warrior wall? Hawk? No, I don't remember the wall. Okay, he died of a heart attack. Okay. Uh, Miss Elizabeth <laughs> died of a. Do you remember her? Yeah, but she was. Uh, I heard her and Lex Luger were. Fell off the deep end and the, like hardcore drugs. Yep, she died of alcohol and painkiller overdose. Cool. And Lex to boot or uh, <laughs> no, no pun intended. He went. Uh, he's not, I, I don't know what exactly happened to him, but he had, ended up having a stroke. So he, remember how like big he used to be? Now yeah. he's like skin and bones. He actually, walks with a cane and stuff. Actually, my cousins met him. They have a picture in their basement of him, and he's got his uh, arm around my cousin Perry like that, and his head's like right there. It's for, it's really funny. Fucking awesome. But he's like skin and bones now. Cause yeah, he, I'm sure. Drugs will do that to you. Yep. He was always pretty skinny, though. No, he used to be roided up. Yeah, yeah, when he picked up Yokozuna, he was a fucking... Yep, body like, slammed him. Tan, oily, muscly freak. Like, he used to wear the armbands tied around it. Like, when he yeah. put him on the torture rack, mm-hmm. he was, like, so roided to the, like, absolute maximum yeah. at that point. Uh, So the same year Miss Elizabeth died, Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect, he had a cocaine overdose. Nice. Uh, Big boss wasn't so perfect, was he? <laughs> Big boss man had a heart attack. Eddie Guerrero had uh, heart disease. Uh, See Eddie Guerrero, let's go to him. I love that little featherweight. Yeah, an awesome cruiserweight. Cruiserweight, but yeah, he was a great heel. He was. He was awesome. Light sheet and steel. Um, yeah, he. I guess he had a a, a heart problem. He had been in a, in a car accident a few years earlier. I don't know if that precipitated it, but um. Chavo actually like found him in a hotel room and like tried uh, resuscitating him, but he was dead. Was he on a hobby horse? <laughs> uh, Bam Bam Bigelow also died of a drug overdose. <laughs> then there's the Chris Benoit thing, murder suicide, his whole family. Mike Awesome, do you remember him from ECW? Anyone? Okay, eh, he, no. He killed. He hanged himself. Uh, Crush or Brian Adams from Crush? From yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Crush, yeah. Yep, he died of a uh, steroid overdose, which is kind of strange. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Sensational Sherry. You guys remember her? She was like a uh, ballet for Macho Man. She had a drug overdose. Uh, Umaga, he died of a heart attack. Test, you guys remember him? Oh, I remember yeah. Test. Yeah. He uh, he had a drug overdose on Oxy. Nice. Luna Vachon had a overdose on Oxy and Benzos. Chris Canyon, remember him? Yeah. Yep. He died in 2010. He uh, killed himself with uh, ODing on antidepressants. Sweet. Macho Man Randy Savage died in 2011 from a heart attack. He actually had a heart attack when he was driving and ended up crashing into a tree. 
So did he technically die from the heart attack, or what was the... Uh, uh, yeah, I think he died from the heart attack. He just also ended up crashing his car. Uh, Doink the Clown, his real name was Matt Bourne. He had an uh, overdose on morphine and hydrocodone. Weren't there a bunch of Doinks? Yeah, there were, but he was like the original, I he guess. He was the main Doink. I Paul, you still make another doink. I thought though. that was you. <laughs> <laughs> um, remember Viscera? Also known as Mabel. Okay. I know Mabel. Yeah. Yeah, he had a heart attack. Ultimate Warrior had uh, had heart disease too, and uh, that's actually what Roddy Piper died of was heart heart problems too. Cocaine's a hell Due of a cocaine, drug. Exactly. Yeah, 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 what did yeah. Rick James die of? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. I guess it's just all those wrestlers from the 80s and 90s just... Hey, here's a million dollars coke. party together, you know? It's like working at the casino. You have, like, all sorts of money yeah. and, you know? Yeah, and you're a wrestler. So, like, how serious do you take your job? Do you go <laughs> practice the mat for two, three hours, figure out your routine and good, and then just go fucking get wasted or loaded or whatever? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's what happened to Jake the Snake Roberts. That's what happened to Scott Hall. Yeah, he's like wet brain to the max now. Yeah. He can barely fucking talk. Well, I think uh, they both actually got a little healthier. Uh, DDP, they're doing the DDP yoga. And oh, both, that's cool. Yeah, there's a bunch of YouTube videos actually of them getting better. You know, it's funny because I always thought Diamond Dallas Page was like just like some biker puke. You know, they're like, yeah, I'll wrestle whatever because he like <laughs> talks like that anyways. You know, and he's like. Looks like he's straight out of fucking the panhandle of Florida. He's got the blonde hair. <laughs> the dog, the bounty hunter. Yeah, fucking, the fucking freckles yeah. and shit and the old green tattoos. I'm like, man, this guy's a fucking train wreck. But it turns out he's like uh, got his shit together more than probably any other wrestler. Yeah, seems like <laughs> it. Um, But yeah, I just think it's kind of tragic that this happens to all these wrestlers. And then like uh, I've read articles about Ric Flair, actually, where he's like massively in debt. Like hundreds, uh, allegedly hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in debt, you know, um, and then like, <laughs> will you see? I owe a lot of those triads down in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> and uh, you know, Hulk Hogan just kind of fell out of popular favor because he said something racist, and uh, it's just kinda... his name's Terry Boley, and he's from Florida. Of course, he's racist. I can't believe anyone <laughs> is surprised by that at all. <laughs> But my point is, it's just kind of tra. It seems like a tragic profession. It seems like if you know, it seems like if you go into professional wrestling, you're you're bound for some kind of well, what about horrible Dwayne, thing. Dwayne Johnson. I guess he's that? been doing all right. Yeah. Steve Austin's he been has doing a okay very too. Lucrative career, yeah. actually. He puts out a new movie every yeah. six months. I mean, yeah, Dwayne Johnson's excellent. I don't know what do you guys think about his acting. He's all right. I mean, he's been in some shitty movies too. He's in, like, definitely the one of the movie. best. Uh, wrestling actors, that's for Roddy sure. Roddy Piper is pretty good. Did you watch They Live the other day? Did you finally get to see it? Uh, I watched the... like three quarters of it, yeah. You didn't watch, th- why would you not watch the whole thing? I don't know. I it does get pretty Something bad. Something happened. I was just, um... They were starting to really notice and like follow him around, and then uh, I don't know, I didn't watch the rest. Didn't you think that was a great film? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I'd never seen it before, and but it's funny, you know, you're like, Jack hasn't seen that <laughs> movie? And like, you know, I definitely understand why. I, I knew the sort of the Cliff Notes version of it before, and uh, you know, it's pretty cool. And just like all the all the advertising is like, watch more television, make yeah. babies. <laughs> I like consume, when, he, when he first puts them on, and he like can see over like the whole city and like all the billboards and yeah. everything. Yeah, like everything changes. Yeah. yeah. But he's pretty good. Hulk Hogan, I'll give you, he's pretty bad. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's not the best actor, but yeah, Roddy Piper. You know, he pays he plays Roddy Piper in all his roles, more or less. Oh, he's a like, wicked uh, typecast. But... Hell goes to frog. T- Hell comes to Frogtown. He's I've essentially. A, I have actually never seen that. Oh, then that's a movie you should see because he's really m- much more like a persnickety kind of. Hmm. You know, I ain't going out to the wasteland, sort of guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he goes out anyways. Yeah, because he's the last uh, fertile male in the world. So there's like this female nurse corporation that is trying to uh, repopulate the earth after like a nuclear holocaust. It's a fucking great premise. It's just so original and like insane and out there. Right. It's like Mad Max and heavy metal kind of combined with like. Kind of wow, that sounds awesome. What's the name of it? Hell Comes to Frogtown. All right, we got to keep plugging this. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great <laughs> movie, and he's like the last fertile male. So this uh, Gynecorp or whatever like comes <laughs> out and finds him. <laughs> And uh, they're trying to bring him back to their base so he could, like, uh, uh, you know, impregnate all these women and stuff. But they're but the finest specimens, right? Like, they kind of yeah, oh, yeah. genetically like the nurses are all hot, yeah. yeah, in order to, like, attract him the most and stuff. And uh, 
they like did a bunch of courses how to like excite male sexual desire because it had been like 30 years since like any men were around kind of thing right and uh but there's like all these like reptilian and amphibian mutants that are trying to like uh take him so that uh he they can like ransom the uh the fertile male to this <laughs> uh like nurse collective that lives cool yeah it's a crazy it's a fucking crazy movie and it's got great like little homemade vehicles and like the makeup's really cool and shit it's a great movie so it's pretty outlandish anyways oh yeah yeah and it's like you know got a lot of uh, humor and stuff in it too hmm. well uh i think we're gonna take a break in a minute but first hurricane i just want to thank you for getting the patriots beer yeah does it taste a little flat like their footballs <laughs> <laughs> Woo, jimmy garoppolo <laughs> yeah that was that pretty bad did you watch that, that game last night no, I heard Dildo uh, complaining about it. That's it, though. Yeah, they. Uh, they... Oh, no, thank you, hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a break, but um, while we are on breaks, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have some music for you. This is a famous New Haven rapper, Drew Taylor, with the song "Hustler." Drew Taylor, Drew Taylor, Drew Taylor. What I do, girl? Hey, I'm a hustler, hustling every way. Right now I'm a waiter, serving all night and day, all day. Jack of all trades, anything to make the pay. Trying to make the pay. So you know I'm a waiter, serving all night and day, all day. Uh huh. Here's something you should know. That tip's a little too low. Only 10%. Could you give a little more? Cause I need some money. Need some money. Here's something you should know. That tip's a little too low. Only 10%. Could you give a little more? Cause I need some money. Need some money. Shit, bro, I've been twerking for days. Deserve to be in a pair of sick J's. A dude like me don't take sick days. I just go to the restaurant and lift up trays. So I picked up a couple extra days. Cause I make plays, need money for the haze. Excuse me when I get so real. And bless you with the silent refill. People never ask how we feel. Five on a hundred, big deal. Getting well below minimum wage. No gratuity, I'm party, so I ain't getting paid. Peeps sitting in my section forgetting how they was raised And leave me less than a quarter to my name If you ain't got a dollar to give to me Maybe you shouldn't came out to eat, motherfucker I'm a hustler, hustling every way Right now I'm a waiter, serving all night and day All day, check of all trades, anything to make the pay So you know I'm a waiter, serving all night a little too low only 10 percent could you give a little more cause i need some money need some money here's something you should know that tip's a little too low only 10 percent could you give a little more cause i need some money need some money dog jeans with a black tee nine slip shoes apron nasty friday night and the place is popping country blasting old folks rocking two hour wait but they really don't care cause nothing compared to an ice cold beer medium rare and a waiter that lets you let down your hair excuse me as i pull out your chair please and thank you is part of my career still not sure how much shit i can take a little girl just puked in section eight little chick giving me the eye on a first date hell yeah kids being a waiter's great but you need to know about behind the scenes how these pretty waitresses is drama queen Hustling every way, every way. Right now I'm a waiter, serving all night and day, all day. All day. Check of all trades, anything to make the pay, make the pay. So you know I'm a waiter, serving all night and day, all day. Straight up now, tell me, do you really gon' leave five on a hundred? Oh uh, oh uh, oh, uh. if you do, it, it might, might break my heart. Straight up, I tell you, I only make five dollars an hour. Oh, 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 what type of shit you trying to start? What type of shit you trying to start, bro? Straight up now, tell me, do you really gonna leave five on a hundred? Oh, 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 if you do, it might break my heart. Break my heart, girl. Well, straight up, I tell you, I only make five dollars an hour. Oh, 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 what type of shit you trying to start?
Anyway, Hurricane, you have a uh, softball game coming up tonight, right? Yes, I do. Are you excited about that? Yeah, it's our playoff game. We're probably not going to do too well. We'll see. I mean. Are you in a league? Yeah. Huh. So what are your, what's your standings right now? Uh, we're the eighth seed. We're playing the, or wait, no, we're the seventh seed. We're playing like the number two seed. How many teams are there in this league? Ten. Okay. It's all just local Colchester business? Yeah, so the top eight teams make the playoffs. We're like the seventh seed. Gotcha. So you should have some faith in yourself, though. What position no, I do mean, you play? I play second on the team right now. Okay. So it's not bad. I don't know, man. I'd go out there with a good attitude. No, I try to. It's just, you know, I'm. we played them uh, last week, so... I don't know what to expect. We played pretty decent. We just made a, like uh, you can't make any mistakes. It's got to be a mistake-free game, and we might be shorthanded tonight. So we'll see. I think the baseball term is errors. <laughs> well, yeah. What position does Krusty play? Scotch. He plays um, shortstop. Okay. So you guys are right next to each other. Yeah. Uh, are any of your other brothers on the team? Yeah. Um, uh, Sam was. He got shipped over to Kuwait, uh, and. Um, is that a trade or no? Uh, no, for the mil- <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no. He's I uh, he had to do it for the military, and then uh, my brother, older brother Stevie, plays on the team. My oldest brother Stevie. How old is he? Uh, forty five, forty six, I think. Does he still fare pretty well with everybody? Oh yeah, he's insane. He'll dive and he plays left field. He dives all over the place like he thinks he's still like twenty. Hmm. So it's uh, well, so do I when I and I usually feel it the next day pretty bad. So kind of sucks. Sore breasts. Yeah, yeah that too. You should uh, probably wear like a sports bra or something when you're out there. I was kind of thinking uh, yeah. that for myself. Though. Yeah, sorry. I got man boobs. It happens. <laughs> it distracts uh, the other players, actually. So it works pretty good. <laughs> yep. That's the method behind it. Do they ever taunt you at all for your man boobs or? Nah, it's just when I'm sitting down, you can really see them like now. Yeah. If you want to touch them, you can. I kind of do, actually. Yeah, there you go. Howard's staring at me. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. I'm yeah, man. Right there, how, so how did yeah. that? How did that feel, Paul? Uh, it felt pretty good. <laughs> it's a s- solid A, solid A cup, I'd say. Well, it uh, it runs in the family, you know. It's not really like Shane's fault. Um, this is true. Blame uh, somebody else. Genetics. My grandmother. <laughs> she had like fucking triple D's, dude. <laughs> My sister had to get breast reduction surgery. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Did they put the excess in your boobs, or how did that uh, <laughs> work out? No, it's actually, uh, I went to the doctor, actually, when I was younger to get it checked out, because I'm like, what's wrong with me? Because, like, all, like, my fat was being stored in my chest, like, in, like, this area. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, they're like, oh, actually, believe it or not, it's called an estrogen and a balance. And uh, what happens is, instead of, like, your body producing more testosterone, like, when you're going through puberty, it produces more estrogen. Mm-hmm. So like it it affects you. So like I'll, actually they said like uh, forty to fifty per, or forty to forty eight percent of guys get it yeah. when they're going through puberty, and uh, they like uh, it can happen. It, it like can stay with you for the rest of your life. So that's kind of I got fucking doomed with that. But whatever, I don't I don't let it bother me. Yeah, it's hormones, man. That's yeah. why I'm bald. It's uh, too much testosterone. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean I'm going bald a little bit bald myself, but mm-hmm. the receding hairline. Did your mother was your mother's father's? It was your mother's yes, father bald? Yes, he was bald. completely bald, but okay. all my brothers, I mean, I mean, I'll mean, i just take my dad. I think I have my dad's gene with that because it's just a receding hairline, so I'm not mm-hmm. too worried about it. I mean, it could be worse. I could be looking like you. No offense, Steve. <laughs> I'm taking. <laughs> Paul. Oh, actually, you know what, though, Steve? Not not for nothing, though, but like Extreme Rob. Extreme offense taken, but. Rob, Rob is definitely balder. Okay, but we're going to catch up eventually. <laughs> yeah. Well, True. And you'll be right there with us. Don't don't worry. I know. When you're like fifty. Uh probably like sixty <laughs> seventy maybe. <laughs> 70. <laughs> Hopefully. So on so the alive. subject of baseball, if we can bring it back a notch. Yep. How about those Red Sox? Doing pretty bad. Yeah, huh? they fucking suck. Yeah. Yep. Um, who you think's gonna win it all this year? Or what is what's the World right. Series gonna be this year? That's really tough to tell right now. Now the Blue Jays just took first yesterday. Yeah, I know Patrick was all excited about them. He's he's yeah because the they're are they're win. great. Like he called it. They're the underdogs. There's a, but all the underdogs are doing good this year. Yeah, the Cubs. You know what, Steve? I I'm telling you this right now. How fucking cool would it be if the Cubs win the World Series this year? Because we can say that we were at that regular season game, uh, the year they won the World Series. That's true. Yeah. But you know what else? Uh, Paul and I went to 
Boston uh, in 2004 and 2007, and the yeah. nights that the Red Sox won the world those World Series. Yeah. Um, so I, I could have gone with you, but I chose. We invited you. And yeah, you yeah. The wall made of water. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. That that the well, I had a good 04 yeah. experience in I Boston. I went the next ball. day. And we were talking for about like 10 minutes inside of this place. I don't know. Can we talk about why you should leave? Or <laughs> um, uh, sure. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, we were just talking like nonsense for about 10 minutes while somebody was going to the bathroom. And it turns out there was a security guard in the corner of the room the entire time. Just no, it w- nobody had gone to the bathroom because that year was just me, you and Bruce. We were <laughs> we were in the Prudential Center staring at this indoor waterfall that they had and just mesmerized because we had taken mushrooms. But there was somebody so we were in like, the corner. I know, we were like there. tripping and like, whoa, like you can, <laughs> you can see emotion or How whatever. How the fuck did you make it home? <laughs> and then, uh, that was all another story, but there was a security <laughs> guard <laughs> in the corner as we were tripping, staring at this waterfall, just listening to us tripping ten, out. Ten minutes of nonsense I know. rambling about how awesome this magical moving <laughs> wall was over here, you know? <laughs> He was probably happy us. you weren't throwing like bricks through the window, yeah, you know, right. considering yeah, right. how Boston usually celebrates Red Sox victories. Well, that kind of started maybe 15 minutes after we really got into the streets. It started to get pretty <laughs> that, crazy. That year, I don't remember that much craziness. I remember in 07, it was a lot worse. That's when I all the riot the cops were out. was a lot worse. Um, well, do you go in 2013 or no? No, I was in Indiana, so I can yeah. come back. They were more prepared in 07 because they knew yeah. what happened. There was, like, riot cops everywhere. Do you remember they was... almost ran over that girl? There was a point when the people, they were, like, marching around the city with this big group of people. And then we were marching, like, through this little tunnel kind of thing or, like, through a through an overpass. And the fucking cops turn on their siren and, like, start, like, racing at the crowd with their cruisers. And everybody started running. And this girl fell down and almost got trampled. And someone, like, had to help her. I think uh, actually during that, some uh, I don't know if it was oh four oh seven, some chick got shot with like a BB gun uh, or not a BB gun. A, um, they have like these guns that shoot the bean bags and that shot her in the eye. And yeah, I, I remember there was a bunch her. of tear gas going on too. You know, we would yeah. walk down some streets and there would just be a whole wall of um, riot police. And yeah, it was crazy. It was just you know a whole bunch of people rioting. You should have <laughs> gone, Shane. Why did yeah, you go? Yeah, I know. Uh, the first time I because in oh four I I. I was watching the World Series in the, the uh, like ALCS like at the Michelson basement like so we all had our seats yeah. assigned seats like no one moved <laughs> like watching the games like it was like fucking life and death so like if you moved your seat like and got up to piss in the middle of the inning like all of a sudden like they'd start losing like it was just it was like one of those things yeah so like a stigma around yeah yeah it, exactly so everyone had assigned seats and you would call me like we're gonna go we're gonna go and i'm like nah man i i, I can't leave my seat like i'm i've been in here for like the last se- i have to stay here that's it so then like i bought a bottle of champagne and i watched it there and i was like man i really wish like i thought about it i'm like man i wish i went but at the same time like it's that that uh what do you call it fuck Oh, like I don't su- know. Superstition. superstition. Yeah, superstition. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll take another one. Uh, should have uh, th- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, thrown caution to the wind of that night. It was yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, I know. And, then, and like looking had. back, and I'm like, wow. Like if it ever happens again, where it's closed. well, so that that's what kind of came to mind. Sure, uh, that's what kind of came to mind was if the Cubs won, I would want to go to Chicago and be part You'd have of to that. Fly out there. Yeah, I know. Because it, it would have been great if they had won it the past couple of years, and I was actually living oh, out there. Dude, you gotta imagine like. The fucking seats we had were pretty awesome for oh, yeah. the game. We they were did, amazing. We were right on the third baseline. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, we were talking to the pitchers there. Yeah, like, we were talk- uh, yeah the relief pitchers, the guy with the beard. Yeah. I don't remember his name, but they're doing great this year. I, I really hope they can get pretty far. They're doing good. The Mets are doing good. The Astros are doing good. The Pirates are doing good. Like, every shitty team is doing really well this year yeah. for some reason. Yeah, and that's what that's what you need to see, and that's what's going to bring— uh, And actually, the Royals, too. I think the Royals are going to win the American League. No. I, I disagree. Why? Because if you watch them, like I've been following ESPN and like I'm watching them and they're just too up and down. Like there's no, like they've been cons- at the top of the. They're of the consistent, division but for- they they haven't played. When they play big teams, they are not as good as you think they are. Okay. That's what. That's what I mean. I could be wrong, but I believe that when they play big teams, they're just they're going to struggle. It's like the Yankees when they before they played the Blue Jays and they got swept about a week ago. Um, they play the Red Sox. Yep. And the first game, they you know, they beat the Red Sox. Second game, the Red Sox beat them two to one, so they were close. And then the third game, they won one to two. So, 
what I'm trying like Clash the, of the Titans essentially. Right. Well, if not it's an only underdog. that, but the Red Sox fucking suck. Yeah, they, they have do. no they're pitching. Terrible. They're they're garbage. And when you're playing like that against the Red Sox, what what's going to happen when you play a real team like the Blue Jays the next? That's why they got swept. They couldn't be. They can't handle that, you know. Yeah. And they're older team, so they're just you know. And later on, September, October, they're. They could, they'll make the playoffs, but I just don't expect much. You never know. Anything's possible. Anything can happen. So to, I, I said this last time on the show. Uh, if I was to predict the World Series now, I would say it would be the Royals and the Cardinals. I'm not sold on the Cardinals either. They're fucking. Uh, what are you talking about? They've been the best team in baseball all season. They cheat. First of all. <laughs> so what? <laughs> they'll still win. Okay. No. I I I I'd like to see that because it would be a How rematch. Do they cheat? How do it they would be cheat a rematch of 1985 or yeah yep. 1985, yep. which would be cool. And there's that that ghost like the the umpire call that uh, yep. I think in that World Series, which was crazy. But um, the thing with the I'm not sold on the Cardinals because everyone's out to get them and beat them, and they're they're an older team as well, so they're doing really well. But the Cubs are right up behind them now. The Cubs have a younger no, team. No, they're not. The Pirates are in second. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Pirates, and then the Cubs. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but I really – I'm not sold on the Cardinals. I'm not sold on the Royals. I'm definitely not sold on the Angels or the uh, Washington Nationals. And, and it's funny. At the beginning of the season, you think teams that are going to roll World Series is going to be the Washington Nationals because that pitching staff is unbelievable. Right. But – they're like they don't have that chemistry balance that I mean they can pull it together there's still a month and a half left to play mm. but anything's possible from here on out I mean look at the Rockies in 07 they were like 10 games out of first place in September right. they want to or some ridiculous it was like a it's a record in baseball but they came back they wound up winning uh the uh wild card they forced a wild card game get in the wild card go all the way to the world series they get swept in the world series but it's still a good story well, maybe the Red Sox will break that record this year. Come back from 14 games behind. Not a chance. The hell they are. Not a chance. So, anyways, uh, but if they if the Cubs do win at some point, I would love to go out to Chicago. It's just, well, yeah, we'd I don't know if it's feasible. <laughs> yeah, right. No, nah, Chicago's a cool city. Well, this reminds me of um, like the end of Wizard of Oz when the Scarecrow starts doing all the math equations. Like uh, that's like the most uh, coherent string of words that I've ever heard Shane like put together <laughs> at one time. And you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Finally um, got some courage. <laughs> I don't know. I would like to go out there. I went. I went out to Boston in '04 and '07. We went. We brought Trevor in '07, and uh, Bruce and I went to. Uh, I thought it was much bigger in '04 when we went. Wasn't that the majority? Yeah, of the '04 was uh, insanity. '07 was pretty crazy too. '07 was when we were marching with that crowd of people around the city. That was just uh, you, Bruce, and myself, right? No, that was Trevor was there that year. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's kind Probably of got reversed really. in your head. A little hazy. Yeah. <laughs> So, Long time ago, you know, <clears throat> 10 years ago. Since we're on this, the subject of sports, uh, let's talk about a little football. Okay. Who um, who are your teams this year? I mean, who do I think is going to win? Let's say AFC. We'll start with the AFC, go to the NFC. AFC East, who do you think is going to win? The division. Uh, I don't know. It depends on how, how well the, the Pats come back. Nah. You know? I, honestly, I'm, gonna, I'm sold on the Bills right now. To win that division, okay. come on. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, but the Bills. Well, Jack, you should chime in on that actually, because yeah. that's your team. Well, I hope that's the case. I mean, um, from what I understand, like I said, according to uh, some Bostonians that shall remain unnamed, except the sex <laughs> toy that resembles their last name, uh, <laughs> the Garoppolo guy is fucking shit, which I'm not surprised about. You know. Like when the uh, Patriots he does suck. were coming up. The whole then, first half of yesterday, he, he totally blew it. When the Pats uh, went to the Super Bowl with Bledsoe behind the helm, they lost to somebody. Green Bay. Green Bay. Green Bay. Yeah. Uh, right, right. Like, you know, I was rooting for them, whatever, the same color, the Bills. Uh, they weren't, like, a very good team for a long time. In the yeah. early 90s, they really sucked. That's yeah. true. But then, like, ever since uh, Bledsoe broke his thumb and Brady just happened to be, like, the best quarterback maybe in history that they had as their backup, like, uh, they just kept winning and winning and winning, and also, like, the character of their team changed to one that's, like, super serious all the time and also, like, uh, very um, sort of doesn't seem like they're enjoying themselves while it's happening. You know, they just, yeah. like, dominate, like, mechanically. It's like the Borg of football, you know, like, 
I know you guys are uh, you're a New England fan, Steve, amongst others. It's just because uh, you know we're born and bred here, so yeah, yeah. got to root for you the don't, home you team. Don't, you don't have to root for them. It's okay. <laughs> you know, uh, it was I nice mean, I when the I Giants beat you guys in two Super Bowls. Okay. I but root I hope, for I, different teams. Also, I also root for the Saints. I hope they win it this year. Eh, not sold on them. Yeah. Yeah, and the Steelers because uh, family connections in both of those cities. Yeah. Um, the Steelers probably the best shot out of the three between the Pats, the Saints, and the Steelers. I'd say the Steelers probably do. To win that division? No way. Why not? Because the, the Ravens? No, I mean, actually, um, well, I live with a Browns fan, so. Oh, fuck the Browns. They're not uh, going to win. No, I'm not saying they're going to win, but they looked a lot better. Um, I watched them last night play. Um, they're not bad. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, I I don't think no, they're not gonna go anywhere, but they uh definitely improved their team. But like I if I had to say the AFC East this year, it's probably the Ravens. Hmm. Or uh sorry. North. AFC North, sorry. So who do you think is gonna win it all if you had to pick at the end of the day? I think last I, time I honestly for the NFC, I as long as the Seattle Seahawks stay healthy again, they're gonna go back yeah, to Super Bowl. I think Bowl. I think that's what Patrick yep. said too. Dude, Odell Beckham? I don't know. Well, that's the thing with the the Giants, though. The Giants look; they have a phenomenal offense as of right now. They improve their offensive line, which they need because their quarterback, let's face it, is a little bitch, and his defense won the uh, the championship two years or two times for them. Um, so you don't really need a great quarterback to win a Super Bowl. That's, Joe Flacco is not a fucking good quarterback. Let's face it; he's not; he's average. Right. He's adequate. Yeah. He he. But when you have a fucking defense that's incredible, you can win Super Bowls. Dude, the Ravens won with Trent Dilfer. I, yeah. mean, I said that yeah. the first podcast. Trent Dilfer too, that's, sucks. Uh, mm. That's the uh, hope we have for the Bills. You know, is that if yeah. the defense is dominant enough, and um, you know, even the uh, the receiving core is very good for the Bills, mm. but they just don't have anyone to pass to those guys. Like, you know, if a guy like uh, Drew Brees or like um, trying to think of like you know a Peyton Manning were to have a guy like Sammy Watkins to throw to, like yeah. they said, his route running is like. Uh, uh, superb like he just cuts and pirouettes and just like loses defenders mm. and all it takes is that one that one second of like oh i'm i'm open and if your quarterback's capable enough he could just lace it right in there like that would be you know it's like a randy moss kind of situation right like root running i mean he had the speed too he just burned people downfield which yeah, is but- like brady saving grace again too like okay brady's got a good arm but he can just fucking hurl it up there and if he's got a deep threat then he's good to go but he also has the uh, the timing down. So when he gets a guy like Wes Welker or like a Wayne Kerbeck kind of guy, I'm getting kind of 90s now, but <laughs> who can really or do Gronk. like really excellent route running, yeah, or Gronkowski, yeah. then, uh, you know, all you have to do is close your eyes and throw, and you know the guy's going to fucking be there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, so so you, everyone's pretty much in agreement with the Seattle Seahawks pretty much going to win the Probably, yeah. yeah. I, but, but what I, about AFC? I think the Pats could come back. I mean, if even if they blo- uh, even if they blow the first four games and then go and win the, the the next twelve, then well, I mean that whole scenario with him being suspended or whatever. I mean, but that's still up in the air as of right now. Yeah. So there's no decision on it. Yeah, right Patrick now. Patrick was telling me it's it's like in court. Like yeah, it actually it's in court. Like a yeah, legal it's, it'll case be it'll be it. uh, settled yeah. by September. Oh yeah. That's yeah, pretty it's weird. crazy. But a lot of money on the line. Yeah. It's a lot I of money so. for him, suspension for four games for for, for something that he did. What did for he do, bookies, Shane? You know? it, can, Shane, can you explain to me? He what, didn't do what anything. Br- so he didn't do anything. So why is he being but suspended? Their team is shady. That's exactly. All. That's what it is. It's because people hate the Patriots, so they have to They're get. They're fucking the- shady. They're cheaters. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Fine. So the team, I, I agree with you. They, Belichick and all them, like there's shady shit going on. But they're but they're focusing the anger on Tom Brady specifically. You know. Yeah, because he's a whiny bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and that you know, did you ever see that Ray Lewis interview where uh, it was like the um, it was like a roughing the passer where Terrell Suggs like just barely grazed him like yep. after he had released the ball. Ray Lewis is like, how about you try to be a man? This is football. <laughs> this is a man's sport. Right. Be a man. 
And I, I can like that's the utter contempt that Tom Brady breeds in the NFL. I understand yeah. all of that, but you're like getting him for something he didn't do at the end of the day, which doesn't seem fair. You know, if he didn't. Yeah, but he well, knew why about is OJ it in jail? Because he exactly, fucking stole yeah. his football helmet, not because he slit those two people's throats and killed them in cold blood. You know, allegedly. Right. So, so some are it saying that he wasn't proven in court. In if civil court, it was. Yeah, Actually, it was. He lost a civil case on that. Yeah. Didn't he? Well, I don't know. I just think you can't blame you can't blame him for something he didn't do at the end of the day. I guess is what it is. Yeah, but, yeah, but he, he knew about he it. Knew he about it. Exactly, it. he knew about it. Everybody that touched those balls knew that something shady was going yeah. on. Shady ball touching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, there there is a quote of his. Um, he's being interviewed for some article, and he's like, "Oh, I love it when Ron Gonkowski." Uh, spikes the balls extra hard in the end zone because it flattens them out for me and it makes it easier to throw them around. Okay. So, like, he's already, like, pulling it that way or the other. Now, were the balls flattened before the game? Were they flattened because fucking they know that Brady likes it, so they squish the balls Yeah, on they're purpose? stomping on him yeah, extra it's hard. Not, it's, it's right, neither here nor there. The That's point is he... that he's like, oh, and like, just any but... sort of advantage I can get to win, like, yeah. it really kills the spirit of the uh, game. But I'm... Like, if everyone's out to just fucking win, why don't we just, like, go kneecap the opposing team while they're uh, around? You know, hire a third party to go fucking break their legs. You ever already you know, baseball you bats on the field? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's another reason why I don't like the Steelers, either. They're a real sort of, Yeah, like, they're dirty. We're just gonna fucking grind you into the dirt like it's like you know you're paying a children's game for millions of dollars you think you can fucking put a smile on your face have a good time chad right. ocho cinco i love that shit oh i'm gonna do place kicks and fucking do a salsa dance on the field great find me thirty thousand dollars find me forty thousand i don't care like yeah that's entertainment let's make it what it is it's fucking a child's game yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from there. Um, and they're all in colorful outfits. They have fucking IQs of 60, and they're millionaires. <laughs> like, it's a goof. The whole thing's a fucking goof. The fact <laughs> that these people take it so fucking seriously is just sickening. Well, I think you uh, I think you said this on Facebook once, that um, sports is kind of a way to redirect people's uh, kind of primitive emotions or maybe, uh, you know, political or nationalistic kind of, you know, sentiments into this fake artificial thing where you know you can be really passionate about something that doesn't matter at all at the end of the day yeah or that generates a bunch of revenue for no reason well right, you pit a state against a state a country against a country and it's all just yeah. you know at the end of the day these sports teams don't pay your paycheck they don't pay, they pay somebody's paycheck <laughs> yeah we're paying them so. i know exactly and that's a, that's the silly thing about sports is we're you know i think i said this last time we're just watching money game. we're watching millionaires play some stupid game you know? yeah but the thing is that's why i like to play softball or like like pool or bowling or whatever yeah because i might spend 35 dollars, but you know what i get a whole season out of it it's fun like i can talk to people like that's that to me is better entertainment than watching Live and die, like oh, I can't wait for this game Sunday. They could win the championship, like yeah, but if then then they get so butt hurt. Like I used to be the same way. Like I don't really not that way anymore. Like obviously, if it's like the Red Sox, like the playoffs, like I'll be like ah oh, man, that sucks. But like when I was younger, I'd be like I'd fucking take it to school. One time I was in Miss Parente's class, and I was so upset that the Yankees beat the Red Sox in the '99 ALCS that she like pissed me off in the class. So I took a pen. And I fucking went like this on my arm. I started going like this. <laughs> ah! I started screaming. And she's like, Shane, calm down. I was like, don't test me, Miss Parente. <laughs> I started like going back and forth. And like, she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so she's like, so they sent me, instead of detention that day, I got to spend it with uh, the guidance counselor. And this is what sports is doing to our children. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, he, he was like, Shane, is, is is everything okay? I was like, yeah. I was just like, I'm upset. Like my then my mom came and she's like, yeah, Mr. Cohen, he's upset because uh, the Red Sox lost and he would he would watch every single game and he was just so aggravated. So I got <laughs> the guy's like, yeah, that happened to me one time when I was younger. I was like, and he starts going on his spiel. I'm like, wait, what the fuck is this guy like talking about? Like he's like, yeah, things in your life can really put a damper on you and really upset you i was like <laughs> well shane what is he supposed to say you're a psych oh, i know you're a psycho i know it's fucking psycho up your time, arm yeah. because a fucking baseball game yeah. well miss frente <laughs> started it and she you. pissed me off so i kind of i don't know <laughs> i just did it 
<laughs> it was her kid. revenge for uh, this whole school year of you and Bruce torturing her, <laughs> like throwing uh, fucking pieces of your lunch on her window and uh, taping up her door with stickers. No, actually, we taped up her door with a Union Underground stickers that uh, Mike f- oh! <laughs> <laughs> he provided for everybody. So it was like me, Bruce, uh, and a couple other people. I think Mike f- was there because he's like, yeah, guys, you guys want all these stickers? <laughs> so Miss Brenna is like teaching her class in the portables, right? So I'm like, all right, this is going to be fucking awesome. So they had like these huge fucking Union Underground stickers. So we taped them up around the whole fucking door. So then we waited for the bell to ring. And they're all trying to like get out the door, but they can't because it's like stuck because we put so many fucking stickers on it. So it's like these stickers are like duct tape too. So it was like really glued on there. And like they had to go out the side door. And Miss Brené like walked around. So we booked it. But like she was like, who did this? Like, yeah, that was us. (laughs) Wait, you admitted to it? Well, no, I did. I'm just saying. Actually, I did get caught. um, uh, Well, no, hold on. Um, I did get caught um, throwing green beans at her window <laughs> after lunch. I had a handful of green beans. So Bruce is like, "Yeah, dude, do it, do it." I was like, and he had so he had like a chocolate milk can, so he just fucking smeared it on the window. <laughs> I took the green beans and just fucking shoved them all over the fucking window. Fuck those green beans, yeah. right? Yeah. So the uh, the next day. I'm in class with Miss Brené's class, and they, Mr. Bennett and Candy. You know what? Uh, pulling me out. <laughs> Winston. No. It, she Virginia. smoked Virginia Slims. <laughs> so they bring me outside, and um, they're like, Shane, we know you and Bruce did this. Bruce already fessed up to it, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, the no, yeah, takes. that's what, yeah. that's what they told yeah. me. So I'm in eighth grade, and then I pulled the greatest play fucking card out of my book. I was like, man. If I cry right now, I can get myself out of this. So this is what I said. So I started crying. And I go, <laughs> I was like, my dad's going to beat me. I f- swear to God, I fucking said that. <laughs> <laughs> DCF's knocking on the door. No, 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 no. They didn't, they're yeah. like, because they knew my parents. They're like, they're like, well, they're like, well, he's a father of 12, so he probably will. Like, they're, they're Catholic, they're like, Catholic like, too. Yeah, yeah they're like, yeah. oh, so Mr. They're like, because they were going to suspend me for two days. And if my parents found it, my chassis fine, okay, you get your goddamn ass in your room. You're done. Like, I would have been fucked for the whole summer, you know, because it was like at the end of the school year. I'll take another one. Um, so <laughs> it would have been like I, my whole summer would have been fucked. I wouldn't have any friends, like nothing. It been <laughs> fucking All your sitting. friends would have just left. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> you can't go over your friends. You got you spent it for two days. So anyways, like I started crying to him and shit. And then Candy's like, all right. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, I gotta talk to you. So they go over in the corner and they talk. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the reverb sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like they come back to like, she's like, "All right, you and Bruce gotta do community service in the portables." I was like, "All right, whatever." <laughs> so like, they made us clean up like all like they we had to, we had to clean up the whole window and everything like janitors. So like we were the janitors that day in the the portables. So, like, everybody left for the day. So, me and Bruce had the whole portables to ourselves. So, we were, like, trying to break into people's lockers. Uh, (laughs) 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 So, then they had, like, you know, like, the big cart you're supposed to put all the trash in, right? So, we used that as, like, a wheelbarrow. So, like, we were fucking, like, running around the portables with, like, and I was in, like, the front seat. And, like, he shoved me off. So, like, I flew into the air into, like, a fucking bunch of cardboard boxes. (laughs) So... (laughs) It was fucking, it was a great time. All right, All right. so yeah, eighth grade was pretty cool. Yep. Um, seventh grade was pretty good, too. Do you remember the time you and Rob Appel uh, got Miss um, Parente to break her overhead and rage oh, at you? Oh, yeah. So uh, I remember I was uh, a new kid in Colchester at the time, and yep. uh, I had been there maybe like a week or two. It had been a really, really just showed up. I'm in social studies class, and I happen to have social studies class with Shane and uh, our uh, l- beloved friend, uh, Rob Appel, who's now deceased. And uh, this is the first time I met uh, Rob. Shane I knew from homeroom. And uh, so I was kind of sitting next to him to sort of, uh, you know, he's kind of like a buddy now. Me and uh, him and Solmo got to know each other a little bit in Miss Terrace's homeroom. So uh, I'm sitting next to him, and Rob's talking. And he's talking about... Um, 
something about a guy who has a potato in his ass, <laughs> and when he sneezes, the potato <laughs> flies out. So he kept going, uh, uh, chew, and then like Shane would laugh. So I was kind of laughing too, and then Shane would be like, uh, uh chew, and they just start laughing to each other because it's the potato ass guy, and. Um, so uh, Miss Parente freaked out and was like, uh, Robert, and punched the fucking uh, overhead and broke the light bulb. Yeah. Now, I tortured her for fucking years about that. The two years I had her, that you broke the overhead. <laughs> Miss, like in eighth grade, especially, I'd be like, Miss Parente. Way to lose your cool. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Miss Parente, you know you broke the overhead, right? I broke the bulb, not the overhead. <laughs> I was like, well, isn't that the same thing? She's like, No. I was like, oh, well, I, I walked past it. I think I saw a cracked screen, and she fucking flipped out of me. You have detention today with me. I was like, all right. Detention with her, too, was the easiest fucking thing in the world. You'd show up to detention. She goes, all right, <laughs> you need to do your homework on your social stu- studies project. I'm like, all right, no problem. I do, like, fucking, like, five things on it. I'm like, all right. I'm like, man, this fucking sucks. So then I, I was like, hey, Miss... I'd be like, hey, Miss Prenny, how's your dog doing? <laughs> she, all of a sudden, she goes off topic. She starts talking. She didn't shut the fuck up. And I'd be like, hey, it's 3.30, Miss Prenny. I got to go. She'd be like, oh, it is. Oh, well, just finish that up uh, before you leave. I'm like, well, I got to go. You said 3.30, 3.30, so I'm out of here. Like, I got to walk home. My parents are having dinner at 4, so I got to go. She'd get all fucking pissed off. But that's how you got out of detention with her. It was the easiest fucking detention ever. Do you guys remember high school detention? You, you couldn't talk. ISS. Actually, oh. I, I had one with uh, Mr. Williams once where <laughs> we, ha- we had a, r- a full room of detention. And I'm going to go piss. He saw a uh, hummingbird, and it was the first hummingbird of the year, and he, like, freaked out. It's like, oh, oh, children, it's beautiful. Oh, detention dismissed. Go home. <laughs> nah, <Nuh-uh>, really? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, seriously. <laughs> Old John Stewart. Jeez. That hey, guy was quite a the flake. ornithologist. Yeah. At one time, I was... Uh, at school after school and i was walking down the hallway and i see him walking down the hallway on his hands by himself what do you mean like not like on his hands doing a handstand but like walking down the hallway for who just for his own yes there was no one else there <laughs> just nice like, weird i know like i Better was bizarre than me. man yeah those english teachers they're pretty artsy do you remember uh, mr anastasio yeah. How we used to hide underneath the desk like a little troll or something like that, and you'd have to like I don't know throw papers at him to get him out. He was, I do not. He was very that. eccentric, like <laughs> like car- carpe diem to the max, you know. Uh, yeah, all those English teachers. I mean, KM there and uh, oh my arch nemesis. Why didn't you like her? She didn't like me. Well, why didn't she like you? Well, oh, I because I was an irreverent prick. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Pretty much why, and. uh I also uh, would always win at Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> so that's why she didn't like you? <laughs> yeah. You told me one time uh, I was out and Vlad was out. We were always on the same team on Trivial Pursuit. When did, I'm, I'm sorry. My memory is horrible. Uh, <laughs> when did we play Trivial Pursuit in high school? Uh, at Kelly Meadey's class, like every Thursday or whatever, it was like Trivia Day. Okay. So we'd go play Trivial Pursuit. And you weren't in my class. It was like uh, I was in there with uh, PJ, Vlad, Bruce, maybe for some reason. And uh, you had like French or something at the time, but you skipped it one time when me and Vlad were out and you were going to play on like the Megan team, which was like consisted of um, Megan and PJ or whatever. And uh, Kelly Muti told you, no, you couldn't. You were banned from playing because I was out and Vlad was out. So. Like er, had restored parity to the uh, <laughs> Trivial Pursuit game. Uh, I, you know, I got along with her okay. Uh, Williams, I really did not get along with. Um, Stanizzi, I got along with okay too for the most part. I think you pissed him off once. Well, uh, was... he was the guy who like went down to rap with us when we uh, yeah. constantly got ejected from every <laughs> assembly <laughs> ever in high school, and uh, he. He was like the mediator between the school and us. And he Guys, come, come on. He came down. He's no. like, you know, what's up? You know, why are you doing this sort of thing? You know, he came down to rap, yeah, sort of yeah. turned the chair around, <laughs> the sat down on the level. Like, yeah. yeah. What's up, guys? So we're like, well, assemblies are fucking stupid and we don't want to go to them. And they're like, all right, well, you can go to the library instead. Well, Paul, like, you almost started a fight all right, sweet. That. 
I almost started a fight. How so? You pissed those guys off, the Christian, uh, the Christian community people. Oh, Christian community people. Whatever, like they were doing that (laughs) shit, and like uh, you were like egging them on. You're like, I fucking hate this shit, and like they were just like, "What's up, man?" You like threw something at them, and like that's how it all started. When we had to go to the office to meet with Mr. Sinizzi. Yeah, I remember that whole thing. We all got kicked out. You were the you were the instigator of the whole thing. It was fucking awesome. Well, fuck those assemblies, anyways. It was way better just sitting in the library shooting that one in particular. Hey, let's put all the bad kids in a room together like yeah what do you think's gonna happen that one in particular like they had the guy like in chains up on a chair and then some guy like speared yeah. him off the chair and, and they then, like, like uh ripped the phone book then like van halen right well, now actually, started ripping playing. the phone book was pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> i didn't throw anything for that one well, at the assemblies too if you guys remember um we used to fucking start the we will we will rock you song Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Though. Boom, boom, cha. <laughs> boom, boom, cha. <laughs> the boom, teachers boom, would get cha. so pissed. That's not an appropriate yeah. time to do that. <laughs> but we uh, have bleachers right here. Why not? <laughs> I remember one time uh, we, <laughs> Bruce, like, uh, specifically had it out for uh, McCubrey, yeah. who was our assistant <laughs> principal. And he, uh, <laughs> like, hated Miss McCubrey and, like, would do everything in his power to, like, piss her off. And one time we like sat specifically behind her, or she came up to us. It was something yeah, she like came she, she, she came yeah, up to us to make there. sure we weren't fucking around too bad. And uh, <laughs> Bruce was sitting there, and John was sitting there. He'd always sit with us, and John was uh, like just laid out like a fart on the bleachers, <laughs> so it's like super loud. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like pointing at Bruce, and Bruce was like pointing at him, and uh, Miss McCoopy just kept turning around. It was really funny. Yeah. No, she actually what she did was she kicked all four of us out, right? So then uh, <laughs> Bruce, we went to the lobby, remember the gym, and we had the soda vending machine? So Bruce yeah, had a dollar right. on him, so he goes and gets a fucking drink. So he guzzles it down, and, like, she sat John in one corner, Jack in one corner, me in one corner, and Bruce. So we're all, like, on all opposite sides. <laughs> She's like, you have to be quiet. I'm like We're like, oh, so we're, like, playing a game, and, like, Bruce is just like, yeah. Like, he's just running his mouth, and I'm like, all right, well, he's going to the office today. Miss McCoobie's like, I told you to be quiet. So then uh, he finishes. <laughs> that was good. Reverb. Reverb. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah. She's like, he starts down in his drink and he puts the can down on the ground. He's like, oh, Miss McCoobie, I got something for you. <laughs> Steps on the can and she goes, Bruce, I'll see you in the office soon. <laughs> he's, he's like, all right, thank God. He's like, I can't wait. I love detention. <laughs> He used to put his feet up on yeah, Mr. Matthew's yeah. desk. <laughs> yeah. It was Miss McCoopery's desk. Oh, Miss McCoopery. Yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. Uh, red checkered yeah. vans with the toe hanging out. <laughs> the that I bought for him. Yeah. Speaking of which, <laughs> did I ever tell you the time I got called to the office for uh, Sean um, uh, James? You know Somebody. Yeah, yeah, James. That's James fine. Copenhagen. We'll so anyways, <laughs> um, I get to the office, and Mr. Uh, Matthew pulls me, and he's like, we need to talk. What's going on? He's like James. I'm like, no, I'm I'm Shane. I'm, I'm Shane Smith. You know my family. You know. He's like, yeah, this is really strange. So he's like, but you know, what you, he's like, you know what you did, blah blah blah. I'm like, no. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, folks, thanks for joining us again for another edition of Primo Nutmeg. If you enjoyed tonight's show, please do like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And playing us out tonight is another hit single by New Haven rapper Drew Taylor. This is Let Me Know. Yeah. Yeah. Drew Taylor. Uh, Sipping eases, Jesus, with my Jesus pieces. This one's for my mother, cousins, and my nieces. Got the cash now, no rent to buy leases. Broke out the cage and I shook off the damn leashes. You talk of feces and your lies are so facetious. I'm suing up now with ski mask and black fleeces. I'm about to blow your mind with my fucking main thesis. And when I move things, it ain't with telekinesis. You need to know that, never can't hold back. Swigging on cognac till my vision goes black. Face a red, turns back, get the picture Kodak. Going Hall of Fame in the games that you pro at. Now, I got some stress off my chest. I'm here to confess it's not checkers or chess. It's the game of life, survival of the best. Are you on to the next or gone like the T-Rex? Oh, if you realize me, then let it show. I suited up for the game. 
head to toe Cruising around the streets, driving slow You trying to make some money, then let me know I got swag by the bag, literally I ain't one to brag, coming from the crag Bottom to the top, getting washed by the cops Money the fast way, friends getting locked Work stashed by the crotch, white and white Reeboks, bag of trees in the sock Night for me, no block You trying to clock in or you trying to get popped I'm trying to move forward, you trying to get stopped I'm a businessman, I guess busy And on a beat, you know it's just busy Y'all can't see me, need some visine 1080p LED widescreen Walking with a lean, whether talking about some green I'm always on point, no way in between One word to describe me, it's gotta be clean Hands hold a wheel as my eyes scope the scene Oh, if you real as me, let me know I'm cruising around the streets, driving slow Suited up for the game, head to toe You trying to make some money, then let me know Light a check, blunt check, mic one, two. I don't take baby steps, I step through. I walk right by the door and they check you. Nike is on my feet and the check's blue. Excuse you, bless me, cause I'm straight up. Like a shot at the ball or a pay cut. Hey baby girl, go home and fix your makeup. True Taylor's in the club, where the fresh shape up. Ball's big enough that I gotta take up. Y'all hate us, but you can't take us. Drew telling you know I'm back at it. Catch me on your iPhone, iPod, iTablet. If you real as me, let it show. I'm cruising around the streets, driving slow. Suited up for the game, head to toe. You trying to make some money, then let me know. If you real as me, let it show. Suited up for the game, head to toe. Cruising around the streets, driving slow. You trying to make some money, then let me know. Yeah, that's Drew Taylor right here. Connecticut stand up. Native son, number one. That's how I do, you already know. Busy, come run. <laughs>